Hi there. I thought I'd make a quick video about the Drift HD 720. Uh, in case you're thinking about buying one, I can talk you through some of the functions, features, and uh, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. So, uh, a Kubu X, based in North America, has a, an HD Drift 720, but his is slightly different, slightly different layout, so I wanted to just go over that in detail um, so he understands what I'm talking about. So the Drift HD 720 from activecameras.co.uk uh, retailing now at about £120. Uh, if you get the discount code either from Baron Von Grumble or Premises187 you can get 10% off which is fair enough, thanks guys. So externally it's got a rubber cover, it's pretty durable it's water resistant but it's not 100% waterproof so they recommend you know you can splash it, dip it, no problem but don't uh, don't actually take it diving or anything. On the front we've got a rotatable bezel so this bezel at the front spins through 360 degrees and the reason for that being that on my helmet when it's mounted it's at about that sort of angle so I need to compensate on the bezel to make sure the image I'm shooting is level. And once it's in place it's nice and tight, it's nice and stiff so it doesn't move, you don't have to tape it up or anything. And round on the back, I've, I'm using this clip mount for the helmet, and it actually secures to the camera via this spinner screw here. And then this black disc around here is actually the speaker. And if I turn it upside down, we've got the microphone under that round piece of rubber there. So as Akumo X was saying uh, in comment to my video, I claim this was an external microphone. And he quite rightly said it's an internal microphone. So yeah, it is internal to the camera, but uh, my point really was that it was external to the helmet. It's, at, it's sitting outside the helmet, so we get a lot of wind noise coming across this microphone. So there's a video up there about that and what we're doing to sort it out, and I'll put a bit on the end of this about the sock modification that I've made. So that's the, the back of the camera, that's the underneath with the microphone. And around the back, you've got this screw here, and when you unscrew it to remove the back of the camera you just reveal the SD card sitting in there, the battery sitting in there and then the USB charger sitting there. And obviously that silver screw in the middle is to take the cover. So you've got to take the cover off if you want to charge it or you want to get the SD card out, the micro SD card out to copy the video onto the computer or whatever. Not a big deal though, and it's nice to have that knowledge that once that's on there, if you're driving in the pouring rain like we all do, it's not going to affect the camera at all. Certainly cope with that. Alright, so basic bit of uh, feature functionality, just walk, walk you through it. To switch the camera on, there's a little play button at the bottom left there. So we just press that once, the green light comes on. It'll flash, out, flash up its logo, get out there. Should have done that today, but didn't. Made videos instead, why not? And then the LED will load. And basically what it's, what it's got up there is the top left, it's got a little video camera icon that's telling me that it's in video mode. And then down the bottom we've got the battery indicator on the bottom left, so it's nearly 100%. To the right of that it says 720, so that's the definition, it's got 720 or SD, so I said it's a 720, it's the highest. So it's not full HD, uh, 1080 is full, this is 720. And then it's got the frames per second, currently set at 30. Two options on that, 25 or 30. 25 will give you more video, but less quality. Um, I'll, I haven't played around with 25, so I'll give it a go and, and let you know what I think. And then there's a little icon actually on the screen there, with a tiny, tiny bit of red in it, and that's showing me how much memory is left on the, H, uh, the, on the SD card. So to start the camera recording, I just have to press the little round button here on the left of the play button. And you get a nice auditory tone that it's switched on. And then you can see the counter. And we've got the words REC and a red, red round icon to show you that it's recording. So that's pretty straightforward. If you want to stop recording, just press it once, same button, and that switches off the recording but keeps the camera on. Now the other advantage of uh, 
of this one is it comes with a remote control. So currently it's on standby, it's not recording. If I just press start, it starts recording. And then whenever I'm ready, I can press stop. And it stops recording. So the remote, it works on radio frequency, so it doesn't have to be within line of sight of the camera. Uh, it's got a range of 5 meters, and it comes with a strap. You put it through the slot at the top and bottom, and that can then uh, go around the handlebar and it Velcro's on. Uh, alternatively, you could always put some Velcro on the back, a little bit on the handlebar, and just stick it on there. Quite useful, because if you're going a long way, nothing much is happening, you could just switch it off um, for a few minutes and then switch it on when you like. Now on the camera, of course, we'll chop those videos into individual files, but that's not really a problem. So that was the record functionality, just pressing that round button at the bottom there to get it starting, starting and stopping. And the other really interesting bits live in the menu, and this is where I was struggling today. I wanted to find out what something did. Went onto the Drift HD website, looked at the 720, I had a quick reference guide that was really just getting you started and nothing else. And then the video tutorials actually referred to other cameras, um, but not the 720, so it didn't really go through the menu options. So I thought this might be quite useful if I just went through them all. So by pressing menu, it brings up four icons. The top left, which is the one currently activated, is the clapperboard with the play symbol, so that's for videos. I've currently got 30 little clips and videos on the SD card. And if I press the play button, it'll go into that option. And it'll show me my first video. If I press play again, it'll say, do you want to view it? Do you want to view all? Do you want to delete one or delete all? So I could control <clears throat> and manage the videos from on, on the camera. So to come out of a menu option, just press menu again. And that's taken me back to the first video, so if I press menu one more time, it'll take me back to the choices. So I can use the up and down arrows to toggle through the options. If I press up, ooh, hello, that's better, I was trying to go straight to that one. So that's the camera icon, you can take still photos with this thing as well. So at the moment I've got one picture in there, if I just press uh, play, There it is, so that took a while, but it loaded up. So it seems to take a while to load photos, I'm not sure why. So there's the picture, and again, if I press play again, a bit like what you saw on video, we can delete one or delete all. So I can press menu to come out of that, take me back to the photo, menu again, takes me back to the main menus. So if I get down to the bottom left, with the clapperboard and the spanner and screwdriver, that's the video settings. So I'll press play to get into it. And at the top it's got report, record mode. So if I press play I can go into that and there you'll see we have a choice of either the video, the three little squares which are um, fast or shooting individual photos and then the standard camera. So I'm going to press one more time to get it back to video. Then I'm going to press play again just to select that. And then we got, so the resolution is 720. As I said earlier, there's two options. If I press play, 720 or SD, I'm sticking with 720. So I can press play just to confirm that. Frame rate, again, I mentioned earlier, 30 is the current setting. You've got an option to take it down to 25, but I haven't tried it yet. Just press play to keep that on 30. Now the exposure when you buy the camera will be set at zero, but I found that uh, during the sort of brighter evenings with white cloud and that sort of thing it gets very burned out so I've set it to minus one and I'll have to keep playing around with that I don't know if minus one's really enough but again you'd be easy you'd use the up and down arrows to change the setting that you want and then press play when you're when you're happy with it and then below that we've got sun or low light so I've got mine on sun because I'm recording during the day mostly now thank goodness because it's spring. But again, if I press play, I can switch it to low light or I can keep it back on sun. 
Now I haven't used low light so I can't really comment on it but uh, I will try it. Put that back on sun. If I go down again we've got the frequency in Hertz. There's two choices. There's 50 or there's 60. If anyone knows what that does let me know. I'm going to leave it on 50 I suppose. And then playback icons are either available or not available. So that's that. The uh, that's the video menu. If I press menu again, it'll take us back. Then I can go over to the settings menu. Menu, general settings. Press play. So the mic sensitivity is currently set at three. I can go in there and reduce that. With the wind noise, you might wonder why I don't crank it down to two or one. But uh, I want to keep the microphone so I can hear what people are saying to me. Because someone had a bit of a go at me the other day. Got a bit aggressive. So I thought, well, if it had come to anything, at least I would have had the audio and the video. So I'll play with that. More to do on that one. And then the remote control, either you enable it or disable it. And then, if for any reason... Oh, hello. Let's go back on that one. If for any reason it loses the connection, you can do remote pairing. If I go into that one, it's just got a refresh icon. And it will just allow you to pair it again. And then the LCD, so that's the small screen, is currently set to go off in five minutes, and that's just because I'm recording. If I go into that menu, you can see we've got a choice between five seconds and you've got 10, 20, 60 seconds, or five minutes. Now, normally I'll keep it on five seconds because by the time I switch the camera on, hit record, and shoved it on the helmet, I'm, I've done that within five seconds, and it just saves a bit of battery power, not powering up the. Uh, LED screen. But just for the moment I'll keep it on five minutes otherwise it'll go off every five seconds. And then camera off, if we go into that one you can set the camera to automatically switch off after a certain amount of time one minute, five minute, ten minute, twenty minute or thirty minutes. I'm just going to choose X, I don't want to activate that at all. Speaker volume, uh, speakers lurking on the back in that rubber circle so you can up and down the volume from here. LCD brightness, how, how bright you want this display to be, and frankly when it's, it's mounted on the side of your helmet you don't really need to see it at all. The date is 1980 because I haven't set it, so uh, time to get the white socks out. Time and all that jazz, so if I wanted to set any of this stuff just simply use the up and down arrows and then uh, play to go forward, set the month That'll be the 5th, and then whatever the date would be. And then menu to come out of it again. Alright, time, same thing, and then date, time, stamp. If you want the date, time to show on your video or pictures, you can enable that. Press play, you got the X or the cross. I'm going to keep it across. Set the language, you can go into format. And you can ask to format the SD card. Obviously you don't want to do that. Let's come back out of that one. Reset everything back to default factory settings. And then it shows you the firmware version which you can update online. I think that's yep, pretty much it for that menu. So I just press menu again to come out of it. So that takes you through all the, all the menus on the HD Drift 720. Uh, to switch the unit off, you just I'll just come out of this, press menu, and that will put me back onto the sort of live feed. And if I press and hold play or record, it doesn't matter, it'll just switch the unit off. There we go. But just very briefly, if you didn't see the video about the wind noise and uh, our attempts to try and reduce it, I'll just show you the, the thing that I made. Here it is. It's just <laughs> the end of a sock. Oh, that's a little bit I'm going to show you about in a sec. So there it is. That's the top of a sock, and I chopped it off a few inches down. And then I rolled it, rolled it once, and then I made a small hole. And like I say on the video, make the hole, the, the hole small because it starts to stretch and the hole gets bigger. And then that just sits, obviously you want the lens 
You want the lens lined up with the hole, which I'll do properly in a second. Pull the sock round the back of the camera. Just tidy that up. Right. Obviously, not very easy doing that backwards. So, not the best looking mod in the world. But I can tidy it up a bit by tucking things around, and I can get, I can sort it out so I can see everything that I need to get to. And then this little piece was an additional because uh, remember that microphone is under here on the underneath of the camera. So what I also do is take a rolled up little piece of sock, shove it in, make sure it's sitting over the microphone. And you can see the results of that mod by looking at the uh, YouTube video I've uploaded. It's not bad, but I'm not sure if we're ever going to get a proper solution to this. Uh, Akumu X um, is... We've been, he's been commenting on the video and he's, gonna tr he's got a wind cutter which he reckons is pretty good up to 40 miles an hour so he's going to try the wind cutter with the sock and see what he can get out of that so uh, hopefully we're going to get some video back from him soon so yeah it's, it's a good camera it's not fully HD at 720 um, the microphone with all the wind noise causes problems but it's good enough I'm very happy to have had it to start with um, it's done a very good job and it's been useful to just practice editing and all that sort of thing. It's very time consuming doing the editing on these movies. They don't, might not look much, but boy, they take time. So I respect the Baron's decision to take his time editing the uh, European, or well, the Spanish racing video, which I'm looking forward to. So there we go. If you've got any questions or comments, let me know. See ya.